to another video tutorial by Kevin Harper. This one is going to be on UVW Unwraps. Uh, this is a character designed and modeled by one of my students. So let's get started. First of all, the character is pretty high mesh, so we're going to turn off the Turbo Smooth and the Symmetry modifier. I'm also going to isolate the character to get rid of the eyes. I think we're going to start with the arm, the hand, and then we're going to do the body, and I'll let you guys do the rest. UBW Unwrap, we don't map the entire object at once, we're mapping uh, different sections, kind of uh, separating the object into multiple pieces, but, without, but only for the purpose of mapping, without separating the object itself, the geometry. So to get started, let's click on Edit Poly, uh, Unwrap UV Map. Now you'll notice all these green lines. These are uh, map seams, which we will not be using in this tutorial. So to get rid of them, in the display section, click on map seams. We're going to be using pelt, se pelt seams, which are a different type of seams. Um, to create a pelt seam, one of the methods you can use is click on your edge tool, select an edge, loop the edge around, and then click on Convert Edge to, uh, Selection to Seam. Now you notice that this edge turned blue. This indicates that we've created a pelt seam. Uh, we can do this also on the other side. However, if we select an edge and we try to loop this around, this will not loop all the way around because of the way the character was modeled. So we could manually go around and select each edge individually, or we can click on point-to-point -point seams, which will allow us to select a vertice, then the rubber band appears, and then we can select another vertice, and it will try to draw an edge the fastest way from one point to the other. So that will allow us to very easily go around and add seams as we desire. So now we have the arm separated from the hand and the body. However, we cannot really unwrap this arm because it is in the shape of a tube right now uh, with no seam going through the middle. So if you're thinking about a piece of paper that is connected at two edges, you can't open it up unless you create a new edge, unless you create a new seam. So we're going to create a seam along the bottom of this uh, piece of paper. So we're going to start here, up, go down this way. I'm going to try to stay along this edge. It becomes a little tricky here, but we can just go into wireframe mode to see where this edge connects. It seems to be that vertice. And then just uh, uh, turn off the point to point seams. Now, to actually go into the pelt mode, we're going to uh, select by polygon and highlight a polygon. You notice this polygon is not really showing up in my viewport despite the fact that I have selected. You can change that by clicking, right clicking on uh, realistic or whatever uh, viewport uh, shading you have set up. Click on configure and in here you can click on uh, shade selected edges. Now you see that the edge is nice and red. I mean the polygon is nice and red. Uh, showing us exactly which one, which one we have selected. Then click on Expand Face Selection to Seams. Now this will select every face uh, until it hits a, uh, until it gets cut off by a seam. So now we have the entire arm selected, and we can click on the Pelt Map tool. The Edit UVs window will appear with only the arm isolated. This is because we had these polygons selected when we clicked on the pelt map tool. Um, now these uh, these rubber bands are stretch uh, uh, are attached to vertices along the uh, pelt edge. So to start the pelting process or the unwrapping process, you would say, click on start pelt. Now this stretch the entire arm. Um, into, uh, 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 into a nice uniform type shape. However, there's going to be some distortion. And to see this distortion, we're going to add 
uh, um, a checkout box material onto this object. So I'm going to go into the material editor, I'm going to create a new tab and call it checker. Then I'm going to add a new material and a standard um, checkout map and add it to the diffuse channel make it visible on the object and make sure it shows in viewport then I'm going to tile this um, checker by 10 so that I can see a little bit better of what's going on so you'll notice now that um, this UV map is all crazy all over here but on the arm we start to see something uh, a little bit more um, uniform the hand is still not um, done right so but one thing you'll notice, despite the fact that this has been unwrapped pretty well, you see some serious distortion here. While these checkers should all be square like this, you can see that they're stretching along this way and then they're squeezing right here. We don't want that. So uh, one way to get rid of that is in the Relax panel, click on your settings. I find the Relax tool works best if you switch it to Relax by Face Angles and start relaxing you can see that it relaxed around here. This will try to match the UV uh, map a little bit more to the actual shape of the object. Once it's kind of settled down, you can click on apply. It uh, had already applied it. And uh, now you can see that that distortion is gone. The checkered boxes are nice squares, which is pretty good. So once you conf uh, commit to these changes, now this arm is pretty much mapped. However, for it to actually, for you to be using it as a texture, it needs to fit into the square. So um, let's get started with the hand. The hand, you can see Jeff made some mistakes here. There's a five-edged polygons and there's no line going along the center, which makes this a little hard to map but do not fear, we'll map it anyway. So let's use our point-to-point -point, um, edge, uh, a seam tool, and just go along this edge. Now this is where the point-to-point -point seam tool really shines, because instead of me going around this edge like this, I'm just going to click here. Ta-da! And it will, um, it will do all that work for me. Now, I would like the, um, the hand to actually be attached by the thumb. So I'm going to get rid of a few edges. To get rid, I mean a few um, seams. To get rid of seams, just click on Edit Seam. This will allow you to add seams by clicking on it, like so, as you can see. And it will allow you to get rid of seams by Alt-clicking on it. So once you alt click an edge, you'll just remove the seam. We're just going to mo remove the ones along the side of the thumb. Get out of that edge uh, edit mode. Select one of the polygons on the hand. Expand your selection and click on pelt. Now. Uh, this looks a little crazy, but once we start pelting, you can see it stretched out that hand pretty nicely. This is the top of the hand, and this is the uh, bottom of the hand, with the thumb still connected in the center. Now we're going to relax this out a little bit, and you can see it's starting to take the shape of the hand a lot more. I'm going to keep going with this a little bit. Maybe we'll bump that amount up make that a little stronger. Okay, so that's a pretty good shape. Now, one thing you'll notice once we commit, let's commit that first, and then one thing you'll notice is that some of these uh, edges are overlapping, which is a big no-no. So to fix this, we can select some of these vertices and relax them independently. these, grab 
these. And you can just go around your object, making sure that none of the um, none of the edges are overlapping. You can also manually move vertices like so, but remember that you might get some unwanted distortion if you're not relaxing. So just relax. Don't worry. Alright, so um, that's pretty much it for the hand. So that's uh, pretty decent. And now, when it comes to the body, we're just going to grab a few edges, like maybe this one, and let's say, I don't know, maybe this one. And we'll loop that and create uh, seams from the edges. And then we're going to use the point to point. <coughs> Excuse me, and we'll just go up the side. I think that's where that connects. That seems fine. And we'll you make another one up here. So now we can grab the um, front of the body. Click on pelt. That's already pretty good by itself, but we'll stretch it and relax it anyway to get minimal distortion. That is fine. Move that to the side. And we'll do the same thing to the back. Expand. <coughs> Pelt. Excuse me. So one thing you'll notice now is that uh, um, the hand, for instance, is as big or bigger than the back. Uh, we're going to get rid of all this stuff. You'll have to unwrap all these things too, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not unwrapping the head and legs and stuff like that. Um, I'm just teaching the technique, right? So the back, you'll notice, is as, as big as... Um, by the way, if you if you select this, you can select objects without uh, individual um, uh, select by element in the, instead of uh, selecting individual polygon. But you notice that the back is, uh, the hands are as big or bigger than the back, and this will result in the squares being um, big on the back and small on the hand. What you would want, what you'd ideally want, is that all the squares are the same size because that will give you much more predictable results in Photoshop where you're drawing your textures. So to kind of get everything to a relative size, you can select all these objects that you would want uh, scaled toward, towards, uh, towards each other in relativity, I don't know, and click on uh, Rescale Elements. So now you notice that the hands scaled down, the back scaled up, and everything is in uh, good proportions. So now you see the hand, the arm, and the body all have the same size. While they don't have the same orientation, uh, you can fix that by rotating these, um, but they all have the same size checkers, which is pretty decent. And then uh, to pack them into this little square, you need them in this little square because otherwise you can't render it to texture and you don't really know where your texture is going to end up and so on and so forth. You just need it in this little square. So to get it in this little square, you could manually move and scale it to be in this little square, or you can click on this pack um, pack normalize tool, which will then pack all your selected textures into the square. I'll probably rotate uh, this one though, you know, and so forth. You might want to rotate them around a little bit to to make sure that they are, um, you know, not taking up all the space as well as um, make it so that it's easy to paint on them in Photoshop.
right? At this point, you don't want to scale them because they're all relative size, right, to each other. So um, now, for the sake of argument, I'm going to move this one on top of this one, okay? Uh, if I now uh, to bring this texture into Photoshop so that I can paint on it, I just click on Tools, Render, um, Render UV Template, and this window will allow me to render a template, and then you can save that out to fi to your files. Now, when you change this to something like normal, you will be able to see these uh, polygons and the normal, uh, the direction of which they are facing. And what you'll also notice, uh, you can also send, change it to shaded or whatever you like, but what you'll also notice that these polygons are all red. This is because uh, uh, these two are overlapping each other. This is a big problem because if you're drawing an arm on here, then that arm is also being drawn on the back, right? So you want to make sure that nothing is overlapping as well as internally. Like if you have uh, one of these, um, um, let's say down here, you have one of these edge, uh, vertices over this way, and now I render the template, you'll see that it's overlapping. You don't want that. You want to make sure that none of them are overlapping and uh, everything is nice and clean. Yep. Then you save that to Photoshop, and then any uh, once you, uh, you see there's a problem here, which is good. This is a good way to test it. But um, you save it to Photoshop, and then you uh, draw your little texture on it, and then you draw throw that texture on in your material slot, and then everything will line up perfectly. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, check out my channel for some more tutorials and uh, I hope you're having fun. Good luck. Bye.